Hi, my name is Judy Donius, and I'm going to be teaching the Blooming 4-Patch class here at SoRight. And um, I want you to know that not only is it going to be a Blooming 4-Patch, but it's going to, you're going to have three different options for making this quilt. And it's from this book called Tradition with a Twist that's written by Blanche Young and her daughter. It's a very old book, but it's still available. And um, in this book, there are many, many patterns, but the one that I truly fell in love with was Blooming Nine Patch. These are two examples of her Blooming Nine Patches. And the first quilt that I have here that I'm showing you is the Blooming Nine Patch. So it's a very simple patch in that there's a fabric and then there's a second fabric. And what you do is you take the first fabric and the second fabric and you make a nine patch out of those two. Now when you make this quilt, in order for you to get the blooming effect, you want to have some relationship between the first fabric and the second fabric. And in this case, it was that the fabric is the same this is the first fabric right here, it has the same colors in it. It has this color and this color in it. And so that's the relationship that it has. And when I put the two of those together, it then blends this one with this one. Then when this one, which is fabric two, is worked with, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna find a fabric with fabric three that has some relationship to this one. And in this case, it was this blue color and some of the green and you're going to make a nine patch of those guys. And it's like a trip around the world because you're starting with three fabrics that are your first fabric. And then you're going to be going around it with the second one, the third one, all the way out to the very end. Now, after I did this nine patch and I did a couple of them, I decided that I like to change other people's patterns to make it either easier for my students or more complicated. In this case, I was going to make it easier. So I decided instead of doing a nine patch, I would do it with a four patch. And I would see whether I could still get the blooming effect with the four patch that I have with the nine patch. If it works, why not do it? Because it is a lot simpler to make four patches than to make nine patches. The first option was the nine patch. The second option is the four patch. So the quilt behind me is a blooming four patch. And as you can see, it's pretty spectacular. It doesn't need to have a nine patch in it. So it's the same format. You have a center fabric, and then you have a second fabric, and you have the fabric that is, you have the four patch made out of the two fabrics that are next to one another. And you keep on doing it till you get to the very end. And it's the same process. You're finding fabrics that blend with one another because they share colors, or one of my favorite ways of doing it, and you'll see it in the next one, is to use the spectrum because colors in a spectrum are next to one another and they will blend in together regardless of the fact that they don't share the colors with one another. So this one, though, is using that same technique that they use in the book where you're sharing colors from one fabric to the next. Students who take this class should come with either just one fabric that they're going to start off with, or if in their stash they have enough fabrics to make the quilt, or they want to add to what they already have. And we are going to do, in the first class, we're going to do the selections of the fabrics. We're going to go over what they've brought, and then if there's anything that they need, we will go through the store and we will decide on uh, which fabrics will go with what they have. We would decide on the order in which the fabrics should be put into the quilt, and then we will actually start cutting the fabrics. And again, as I said with the nine patch, it's just one square that's solid, and then a four patch. If you're only bringing one fabric, find a fabric that has a bunch of colors in it, because that makes it much easier to work with blending it to the second fabric. If you have fabrics at home, you could try putting them together on your cutting mat and seeing what works well together. You don't have to cut anything in advance, you just want to see which fabrics speak to one another. And that's what you can... The materials list has how much fabric you should bring. You could always bring a little bit more because you can make the quilt bigger if you want or you can make it smaller if you care to. It's all up to you. I like having options for all the quilts that I make and so here you're going to have not only the options of which one you're going to do, 
but you also decide on how big you want to make your quilt. It can be small, it could be a lot larger, you can add borders to it. There will be a lot of variation amongst the people who are making their quilt. This is the third option that I worked with. This, this came about after I made a bunch of four patch bloomings and I said to myself, what will happen if I do it in a linear way rather than like a trip around the world? And so this one uses up less fabric per fabric. In other words, we're going to use the same amount of fabric in each of the colorways. Where in the regular blooming, you have to buy more and more fabric because as you go out, you're going to be using more and more fabric. This one has the same amount of fabric in each of the colorways. And so whether when I'm using whatever I use in the blue one, the green one that's below it is the same amount as the one above it. This is very different from the other ones where we were doing it as a trip around the world and as you went out, the amount of fabric that you needed grew with each round that you did. Here, they're all exactly the same. And you still get this wonderful effect. In fact, I'll show you what the bottom of this looks like. This one is like a colorway. This is like a rainbow. And this is, this is the case where we're working not so much with sharing colors from one to the other, but we are doing the spectrum. We are going from blue to green to yellow to orange to red to purple and back to blue again. In all of the cases that we're working with, you do not have any Y seams. You are going to be doing the blooming four and nine patches in a round, but when you sew them together, when you've made your color choices and you're ready to sew them together, they're going to be sewn together on the diagonal, so there's no Y seams. This is one strip going from here to here, and it's the same on the blooming ones. You're going to go from here to here, and once you have all of the rows together, you then sew them together. And what I like to do is I like to start with the smallest one first, work my way to the middle, and then work from the middle down to the small one again. And that's all I have to say about these, and I hope you enjoyed watching it, and I hope you would like to join to us to learn all these wonderful variations, and perhaps I'll see you. So thanks for watching.